Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another video on this channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Porsche 911 997 IMS diagnosis and repair. But before that, I would want to say a heartwarming thank you to everybody who has subscribed and to all of your viewers on the channel because we have officially reached a thousand subscribers which is a tremendous milestone in any YouTube channel because afterwards basically you can start growing the YouTube algorithm recognizes you potentially a bit more and again a big thank you now before we get started as always I'm going to have to ask you to click like to hit subscribe we have to keep the YouTube algorithmic overlords very happy with our progress and analytics on this video so for today's video what I wanted to do is to share a personal story with regards to my 997 and that is of the IMS or intermediate shaft bearing so as many of you know, the 996, 997, 986 and the respective Cayman have all had their issues with regards to the intermediate shaft bearing. Now what does the IMS actually stand for? It is the intermediate shaft. Now what it really does, it drives here, which you can see the camshafts over here on both the right bank, left bank or you know, respectively the other side around, but nevertheless it is responsible for sort of decreasing the speed from the crank that you can see here to the respective camshafts themselves. Now, in principle, it's a good enough design. However, basically the IMS bearing itself has had its fair share of issues. A lot of the you know IMS bearings themselves can fail, but in principle, this is slightly over-exaggerated by forums. As everybody knows, when you go to a forum, you're not usually talking about what is great about the car, but rather how can you fix something that is broken. But we'll talk about that in a bit. Now, when it comes to the individual IMS bearings themselves, there are various types. There are single roll, dual roll, ceramic, and basically other solutions on the market. Depending on your situation, on the condition of your engine, you might be looking into one or the other. But just as a preface to this video, what we are talking about is not a do-it-yourself guide, but rather information for owners of the 997. A lot of the people basically will not be doing this by themselves, which is fine. This is an incredibly complex thing. I've, I've done a lot of mechanical things on my cars in the past, from brakes to timing, uh, to timing belt exchanges, etc. But basically this is something that is one step above that in terms of complexity and really the errors that you as a user or you as a, let's call it pseudo in-house mechanic can do. And therefore I think the vast majority of people purchasing a 996-997 will be rather looking into going to a mechanic. But that does not mean that you're not supposed to have all of the necessary information. So for today's video, we're going to be focusing on the later 997 Carrera S or basically the 3.8 slash 3.6 engines with the improved or revised IMS bearing. So the reinforced one. So what happened to me personally was I had an oil change on my 997. We used a lighter oil and then I started to notice some small leaks under the car. Now, basically some of the main factors that can indicate an IMS failure or IMS issue in general or RMS issue, now RMS stands for the rear main seal, is that you'll have of course these oil spots as you can see here on A and B. And as well, you could see this by uh, having, for example, metal flakes in the oil filter when you're doing an oil change. So on a side note, whenever you do an oil change, make sure you inspect the filter for metal flakes or debris inside the oil filter, which you, in principle, obviously don't want to have unless you're running in a fresh new engine. And even then, those flakes should really be minimal. Now, an important fact to mention here is that in principle, there can be a situation where the intermediate shaft bearing can fail without any symptoms. So you have to bear that in mind in terms of risk. So I had more of a sort of OCD approach when it came to my diagnosis. What I did is I developed the so-called RMS slash IMS pampers. And what this is is basically assembly of A4 sheets of paper that I stuck together and stuck under the car. I would drive the car for approximately 100 kilometers, after which I would put the IMS diaper below the car just to see basically where and how much the leaks are happening. So in my case, after each iteration, I would have pretty much one drop here and one drop there. In my case, again, the A here stands for the oil chain tensioner, which you can see basically here, and then here is between the region of the RMS or IMS. Now you will never know what that actually is until you take off the transmission. We'll get into that in a second. Now you will see a video where basically I'm recording the car from, from the bottom where you can see that it's kind of dirty and it's starting to build up. 
And so now we can talk about sort of your options as a consumer, as an owner of a 911. So I really consulted with two experts in the area of engine rebuilds with regards to Porsche engines specifically. One was in Austria, the other one was in Bratislava and Slovakia. And I spoke to them and basically both of them stated that it's a non-issue. The Austrian mechanic really didn't worry. The Slovakian one said that basically it's an overblown issue on the forums and neither of them in their you know, decades of career have not experienced an IMS failure per se. So therefore they're looking at this, yeah, a little bit, I would say, with some reserve. Now, depending on your risk propensity, you can decide always to do either nothing, which is perfectly fine if you're aware that that might potentially at some point lead to a catastrophic engine failure, or you can decide to replace the RMS and IMS, and the IMS can only be in, replaced on certain models of the car. So that is something that you personally need to decide. What is it that you're willing to do if you want to replace it in advance, if you don't want to? And again, you have to bear in mind that the risk of this actually happening depends on model, depends on year. And just to give you a feeling for that, for example, for the 996, the earlier ones had a dual row IMS bearing, but then the factory went up into flames and therefore they had to change the supplier and they changed to a single row IMS bearing. So what I'm going to be doing here today is sort of experiencing or sharing with you my experience as a consumer who doesn't have so much work experience with the specific mechanic I was dealing with and therefore I wanted to do my necessary due diligence and research to understand the issue whatsoever. And so for me, if I was searching, when I was searching the internet, there was a lot of information that I would consider unsubstantial, at least in my eyes. And sort of the two best resources I have found over the past, let's say, two to three months after noticing the leak um, were basically these two, well, one forum, which is 911uk.com, and there are some amazing mechanics there that do respond and give their honest opinion. And the second one was the Porsche Club of America, Upper Canada region. They have this great post on so-called IMS anxiety. So I highly recommend to visit those two resources, especially the 911uk.com in terms of when you have a specific question, because the other forums, I was not as lucky, at least in my research. So let's get right into the 997. So the important part is that the 997 is one of the most reliable when it comes to the intermediate shaft burn, with the disclaimer that it strongly depends on the type of engine you have. So in my case, I have the engine with the numbers 6864149. By the way, this acronym or this S stands for that the car was equipped with the X51 package from the factory. And that means that it's above the engine number 68509791. Now, what does that even mean? It means that after this number right over here, the bearing was reinforced. And the way you can notice this mechanically is with a larger 22 millimeter center nut after you remove the IMS flange itself so the flange is basically covering the bearing itself so yeah that's something definitely that you need to look into because prior to this engine number you're working with a removable and hence serviceable ims bearing itself and therefore you can decide whether or not to replace service that etc now the process in general is quite complex but not extremely Nevertheless, just to describe you, what you have to do is you have to disconnect the battery, drain the engine oil, remove the air cleaner housing, remove the manual transmission. And now here is a big asterisk. If you have a Tiptronic equipped 911, then you're sadly going to have to move or pull out the engine itself wholly basically to remove and get to the IMS bearing. It's a pity that you can't do it on the automatic, but that's just the case. And after which you remove the clutch and flywheel and a very important factor, which is you need to lock the timing and crack. Some mechanics, some people will tell you that it is possible to do the what we're going to talk about today without basically locking uh, both timing and crank, but in my case, I personally didn't want to take that risk. And great enough is that on the 997, you do not have to basically take the engine out in order to lock the timing and crank, and therefore you're not going to be afraid of doing that in the first place if you do that necessary precautious step. The next thing which you will know is you need to clean the working area of the bore. So basically as you take off the transmission, there's going to be a lot of gunk either on the RMS or IMS, because remember, we don't know yet at this stage whether it's going to be the RMS or IMS, but nevertheless, it makes a lot of sense to clean that thoroughly um, so that basically no debris can get back into the shaft or into the bearing whatsoever. 
Now afterwards you can remove the flange cover which we'll get into shortly and then optionally but highly recommended what I would personally do and what I have done with my car is you want to replace the clutch and flywheel obviously hopefully you won't be taking off the transmission anytime soon in my case the transmission or the clutch and flywheel had approximately 100,000 kilometers so they never ha they have never been removed so it only makes sense to replace those I would also recommend even if your IMS bearing is not leaking to replace the RMS, uh, RMS or rear main seal itself because obviously you don't want to have another leak happening in the future and then don't just replace the o-ring on the IMS flange itself because the actual IMS flange had many revisions there's I think it was like six or seven re revisions since the car was introduced meaning they're consistently improving and basically updating the design of the flange itself so Peter has been dealing with Porsches for many years here in Slovakia. He gets engines sent in from both Germany and Austria for repairs as well and so for rebuilds etc. He's a stand-up guy, I highly recommend him, he's easy to talk to and he's the type of guy where he will recommend you the let's call it optimal slash budget friendly decision because of course if you wanted to get this repaired with a Porsche stamp at a Porsche dealer I'm sure they would recommend a full rebuild of the engine etc for whatever 15-20k euros. So here we can see that the transmission is removed and we can observe some sort of scoring both on the flywheel and the clutch. I don't have the clutch pictured in the video itself, but nevertheless, again, that was a telltale sign for me that, okay, now it's time to get, get to it and to get both of those topics done. So here we get to um, basically the most important part of the video. So how do you really assess what's up? So here you can see basically the transmission bore, so to speak, or the engine bore for the transmission. Here is the rear main seal. And here on the bottom you can see the IMS bearing or the IMS flange attached by two screws. The important takeout here is that this is the 22mm bolt, hence confirming that this in fact is the reinforced IMS bearing itself, therefore non-serviceable, but that's a separate topic. And you can see that there is a lot of gunk built up here around the IMS flange. So that's indicating to me a few things. It doesn't necessarily confirm that the IMS bearing itself here is at fault. Why? Because there's a rubber gasket or rubber seal on the IMS bearing. Now just for some background information and I'll show a picture, an IMS bearing itself has obviously ball bearings inside and then it's covered in a lubricant from the factory and then covered with rubber seals. Now what happens over time, those rubber seals deteriorate and they can thus let oil come through. Now that is actually a great thing because the lubrication or the lubricant is probably not going to last you super amounts of time and therefore if it's being lubricated by the engine oil then that's great because that means that it basically is being maintained by your annual service cycle or whatever service cycle or oil maintenance schedule you have in check for your specific car so that's actually a good sign on the other hand that then means that here you can see again how much it's seeping outside of the IMS flange and thus creating a lot of this debris and potentially even issues with your clutch or flywheel where when you let the clutch uh, go and press on the you know when the clutch depresses on the flywheel then you're going to have potentially some slippage due to all of this debris but that's a secondary topic so we move on then to show you basically what is the next step and here we can see the crank being locked and here basically the the cam camshafts being locked themselves so again highly recommend to do that because the last thing you would want to do is to mess up your engine now even for DIYers it's quite easy to remove the transmission on 997 996 but the locking of the cams that's just something that me personally I didn't want to take as a risk when attempting to do this myself okay so here we can see the IMS flange removed so on the left hand side this is the flange basically taken out and what you can see on the image is that basically you can't tell really anything which is again fine at this stage now what I wanted to do and what I've read online is you want to remove the rubber seal so that it basically exposes the bearing itself as you see here and the reason to do that is that even with this rubber seal that you see on the left potentially there is not as much oil lubrication basically happening there because there's the rubber seal that is sealing that away so what I've read online is to remove this so that then you have full oil circulation without any impedance in the lubrication flow so to speak and therefore it should allow for smooth lubrication now a lot of the people will say that you can really sense the IMS uh, stage or the state in which the IMS is by you know, moving it swiveling it kind of and not kind of at the same time so you're not going to be able to anticipate failure by simply touching unless it would be really at a deteriorated state 
where when you would turn it, you would feel, you know, crunchiness and metal basically happening, which was not the case in my car. So again, here I was extremely happy. Okay, so and here we can see a video with the IMS flange installed and sealed. And as you can see, it's not the worst thing on the planet. Plus, thanks to this, I will be able to enjoy some more 911 drifting. And yeah, so I, I'm, what I wanted to say here is really don't be afraid of the 996 or 997. This is a serviceable thing. It's not something that's going to automatically grenade your engine. And for example, with the 996, you have a lot more issues other than the IMS bearing itself. For example, the cylinder liners are very thin on the 996 or the M96 engine in that case. And that can lead to cracking. And Peter Dassault showed me a 996 that arrived recently with smoke and obviously that's going to be a costly repair. So the IMS is not the end of the world. So if you take a proper look into it, it's fine. And what I would only recommend to doing after you do any IMS service or what I've done here today with my car, just make sure you keep the oil maintenance cycles up to date, that you replace the oil far more frequently than you normally would, because in this scenario, in this IMS solution, what you're going to have is basically the oil that is lubricating the engine, it's also going to be lubricating the bearing itself. So obviously, you don't want to have any arid or bad components running through the oil, so that's what I would recommend personally. Okay. So thank you all for the great support. I'm really happy that we reached this threshold of 1000. I hope this video really helps you make the right decision with regards to the whole IMS situation and the things you read and listen on the forums so that you don't worry, so that you're really not afraid of what you hear and that you just take a pragmatic approach, you do your research and so on. So this video has been done for the late 997.1s with that specific engine. If this is something that you would want to see for other models of the Porsche of the IMS, let's call it generation, please let me know in the comments below. Furthermore, if you would like to talk to Peter directly, hit me up again on the comments and I will give you the contact details. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I'll have some more fun with the 997 and the 997 once it's fixed, that will be the next car that will be done in terms of the reviews for the channel. Wishing everybody a nice remainder of the day. Take care. Bye-bye.